Let's read this scripture together. Blessed be his glorious name forever. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Psalm 72, 19. Now, you want know, to see amen and amen. You gotta say like, amen and amen. You know, that, that's so be it, so be it is what it's saying. It's like this is such a great truth. We just gotta say amen. So let's read this again. Blessed be, go back, Larry. <laughs> Blessed be his glorious name forever. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Psalm 72, 19, again. You know, sometimes we, we hear phrases, I mean, where'd that come from? Well, amen and amen is from the, the word of God. Uh, so be it, so be it. But we are here again because of him. And so let's sing this great song, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
Sometimes it's hard to be joyful with circumstances around us, but joyful. And let me tell you, joyful changes this part of your face. It does. You can smile even in the midst of pain when you have God's joy and you're focusing on that. Um, that's why I just love God, because it's His joy that He gives to us. And, and, you know, sometimes it is hard to find joy, but if you really sit down and think about it, there's probably, I don't know, ten reasons. Maybe, maybe more than that. I think there may be 10,000 reasons that we are to bless the Lord. So let's sing that song together.
any good place. But when you're in those valleys and dark times, it's just so hard. But I, I, you know, as I get older, especially as, as I love the Lord more and more, I'm finding more and more that in praise. Um, in, even in the midst of tears and pains, because it, it's, it's not this. I mean, we're in the midst of this, but God is so good that he is always with us. That's why this next, this next hymn is just so powerful. It's all that thrills my soul is Jesus. And, and no matter the circumstances, you know, I mean, even this weekend is, is the memories are there uh, for so many people. All that thrills my soul is Jesus because you know that he's been with you all the time. And so let's sing this great hymn. Glad that you're here. Sometimes, you know, uh, as a pastor, you wonder who's going to be here on holiday weekends and who's not. And we have to come to preach just to redundant. 
which would be okay because she preaches at me at home, so it's kind of that, you know, that turnaround. No, not really. Uh, it's great, great. Uh, it's always great to gather together. You know, again, we come in with, with different things. We come in with joys and sorrows. We come in uh, tired sometimes. So kids, come on up to see Redonda if you want to get your worship bags. All right, so we have been talking about fears. We have been talking about fears and overcoming fears. Uh, we all have fears, every one of us. Sometimes those fears are, are more debilitating. They're more constricting on us, depends on where we are in life, depends on what we're going through, what our mindset is, where our walk with Christ is at times. But we all have different kinds of fears, and, and how do we deal with those fears? Because God says that we can, through Him, overcome fears. Now, God does use other people. God uses His Word, which is His Word. God uses so many things in our life, but it's always Him that does that. It always depends on who we're focusing on. And even though we've been strong, the first week, or the second week, we looked at David, King David, there's a man after God's heart, <coughs> heart. But fears came into his mind where he started acting insane, you know, salivating and drooling all over himself and scratching on doors. This mighty warrior became crazy little changing. Now we don't get to that point typically, but sometimes it changes us to where we are acting crazy because of fear. <coughs> then fears, when they're changing your mind, your mind, it also changes your words. So we looked at Abraham last week and how he was afraid, so he lied about his wife. And he thought it got away with it because nobody did it. Well, he was fine with it. He was blessed by so many things. But then Pharaoh started getting the plagues upon him, and his wife was with Pharaoh. Um, and so... When, it, when that fear comes in, changes your mind, changes your lie, your, your words to lie, get out of things, it always, always, always has bad things happen. You may think you've gotten away with it, but lies never are right. And so this morning we're looking at another area of fears, that fears make you hide. Looking at Adam and Eve this morning, in the very beginning, God created all that we have, this whole universe, in six 24-hour days by speaking it into existence. Because God is God. And he, he did this, and then he created man, born him out of dust. He looked at Adam and said, he needs a helper, so he, he took Eve from the, his side and made her. And they were together. And, and God says, you have all the garden. You have everything that you need. Every tree here and you see in the garden is good for food. <laughs> Except don't eat of this one tree. That's the knowledge of good and evil. By the way, it was not an apple tree. So we're good there. You don't have to eat. The apples are fine. But Satan comes in and deceives Eve. Talking and asking questions. Doubting. Making her mind go away from God from what he said, from God's word, and then comes in. And so, this is what goes on in Genesis chapter 3. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, and delightful to look at, and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave to her, some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. So they're both there at this tree that God said, don't don't eat of it. You have everything else, but don't eat of it. And, and what Satan did, it says that first it was these eyes, you know, she, she saw it, he saw it. And it's like, you know what, it's not just that, it's like, I bet it's good for me, I've I, I got to try some of that. It's tasty. <coughs> but also, more than anything, she wanted the wisdom there. He wanted the same thing. And the Bible talks about the lust of the eyes, the lust of flesh, and the pride of life. Those are our temptations that, that are out there. 
And so they gave in to this temptation. And then, it says, And the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Because when God had, had made them, they were completely naked. There was no shame because there was no sin. It's, we, we can't imagine that at all. Because we, we know that shame. Our granddaughter, who's two and a half about that, she's in this naked phase. Right? <laughs> Off come the diaper, the clothes, just run around naked outside. You know, we, we should not do that. Okay? <laughs> But really, when you're past three years old, that's just, you know, because we, we know the shame of that. She'll get to that point. It's like, oh, I, I'm, I shouldn't be doing that. But right now, as an innocent child, in her mind, is, is there's, there's nothing wrong with it. But when Adam and Eve ate this, it wasn't some sort of special power in the fruit. But it was their choice to sin is what opened their eyes to sin, what opened their eyes to shame. And they could go, oh, no. We are naked. So they sewed clothes out of, out of leaves, because that's all they had, and, and covered themselves. And then we're the same thing. When we choose sin, sin changes our lives. And we think it's just innocent sin, small sin, or whatever. But it always, always, always changes our lives. The next verse. Then the man... And his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Yeah, we read these things. But I mean, this is just incredible. They're in the garden. This must be something that was happening all the time. That God somehow, they're hearing the sound of God walking in the garden. And they go, oh no. God's here. Let's hide. All right? They've already hidden their bodies. Now they want to hide, they want to hide their lives away from, from God. So the Lord called out to the man and said, Where are you? Now, understand, God's not just going, Okay, I created two people. I know I did. Uh, I, yeah, I put them here in the garden. Now, where are they? It's not God didn't lose them. But God is wanting them to acknowledge what they've done. God wanted Adam and Eve to acknowledge that they've sinned against Him. And so, Adam answers, and he said, I heard you in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked. So I did that's just kind of a, a weak answer, but it's partially true. I mean, they had encounters with God before when they were naked. But now the shame is there. Because he knew what he had done. He knew he'd gone against what God had said not to do. He knew that he had given in to the temptation that was there. And now he's hiding himself. Because it wasn't the nakedness that brought on the fear. It was that he knew that God was there. God's presence was there. And all of a sudden that, that fear came in. Because all, almighty, holy God is now there with him in the garden. So God calls him out on his sin. Adam did. And we do the same thing. We try hiding from God. And we seem... To think this works. We seem to think this works. From Almighty God who created us, who is, His presence is everywhere. We seem to think that we can hide from God when we choose to sin. Just like they did. Oh no, we sinned. I hear God, so let's hide behind some trees. Now, we didn't reckon to hear Him walking in the garden. But we know, we all know this, when that, that conviction of sin comes in, we, we try to do something with it. Even when we're sinning, God does not see me doing this. I 
I've gotten away with it, just like my lies I've gotten away with. Job 34, 21, for his eyes, God's eyes, watches, watch over man's ways. He observes all his steps. Now, I, 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 I have done this quite often in the past. I, I remember vividly when I was like 12 years old, my mom had some cookies in the kitchen. Um, it was in those glass jars with the glass lid. She was back in the back room. She said, don't, don't eat any of those They're for later. Well, she wasn't there. So I was good about getting that glass lid off. You know, you're looking around. And these were actually just Oreo cookies. So, got some Oreo cookies. Put the lid, that's the harder part, put the lid back on. Don't hear anything. I'm good. So I, I run, we, we had a front porch, it was, it was windowed in, but it was a step down. So I, I just kind of jog out there, and kind of, you know, 12 years old, jump off that little, one little step, and there's a piece of carpet on the concrete out there, yeah. and that carpet went, Toof! and I went down. The cookies went first, and my face went into a cookie. Oh. My lip splits open. We have to go to the emergency room after I call mom. And they had to dig out cookies out of my lip. <laughs> you know, that wasn't, that wasn't fun at all. But I always go back to that because I think I get away with sin so often. I'm hiding from my mom. But it eventually caught up with me. I mean, I had one cookie on the way, so that was good. And the other cookies, you know, they damaged me. And it stopped me from eating Oreos for like five minutes. <laughs> I wasn't quite, it was a little bit longer than that. But I just vividly remember that, and that's true, it's not making this up, it's just like, wow. Because of that sinfulness that I chose to do, going against my mom's uh, ways. But God always watches. He's always observing. We think we get away with it. Psalm 90, verse 8, you have set our iniquities before you. Our secret sins in the light of your presence. Again, we, we sin secretly. We, we like the dark places to sin. We like the away places to sin because nobody sees us. Or the people we're sinning with, they're all good with it. When we, when we come into places like this, we're like, oh, I'm not going to sin here. You know, I'm not going to do that here. Because this is, well, it's here. But over there in the dark, over there in the quiet, over there in the secret, I can sin. But God sees it all. Our secret sins. Proverbs 5.21 For a man's ways are before the Lord's eyes and he considers all his paths. And yes, even though we know these things, we know God's everywhere, we sin, even though Adam knew that God created him in all this, he knew all this, they hide from God Almighty, all knowing God. So back there in Genesis, 310, he said, I hurt you. And the garden was something. I was afraid because I was naked. That's why I hid. You know, and, and this fear is a different fear. This is not a fear of man like David and Abraham had and we all have. But this was a, a wrong fear of God. You're hiding because of the fear that he is holy because he's God because you know what he said. But this fear even goes beyond that hiding. This very next verse, God says, Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? God confronts Adam with about his sin, about his hiding. And I don't know about you, but when I've sinned at times, I, I've looked at this, you know, I've sinned and all of a sudden, I'm reading a scripture or I hear somebody else talk about it, and it's that very same thing. And I'm like, how, God? How did you put that there? And, and all of a sudden, that, that squeezy. You know, because I've heard people say, did you know what happened in my life last week? And it's not me, it's God's word. They blame me or, or blame somebody who knows that they told me these things and I, and I talk about it. But I'm the same way, it happens to me. Where God comes in with something very specific. And that's what God says. Here's something specific. I told you not to do, but you did it anyway. 
Did you eat this? And so fear. He's already praying he hid. And now God confronts him, and it's even more fear. Fear changes your mind. Fear changes your words. And so, let's see what this fear did to Adam. Then the man, Adam replied, well, uh, did I do that? Well, the woman that you gave to me, uh, well, she gave me the fruit and I ate. Wow. Um, his fears lead to deflecting. It's, it's, we get that confrontation from God through His Word or something, His Holy Spirit comes in and says, hey, you did this. And we bring up the best excuse, right? Uh, yet I, I know I did it, but really it was, it was her fault, it was his fault. It was that situation, it was work, it was school, it was my health, it was something else. It was, you know, we deflect because of the fear of God's confrontation to us. This happens with men too. When people are, are bringing that, we have a fear against men, we, we lie, we deflect. <clears throat> you know, when, when my mom asked me what happened, when, what she, how she, I remember now, she was downstairs ironing in the, in the basement. Um, so I went down there, what happened? Because I'm bleeding. What happened? I fell. You know, and, and really the rest of the story didn't come out until we got to the hospital. Back then, when you went to the hospital, you actually got seen very quickly. Back then, but it was, you know, what is this inside your mouth? Because it was dark. He didn't know what it was. Um, Oreo cookies. And then my mom knew I lied. It, you know, everything happened. Because I tried to deflect the truth of what I did, and we do that. Adam just did it. Hey, it, it wasn't me. It was her. And by the way, you're the one who made her God, so it's really back on you. And we do that with God, too. God, this situation, you should have known about that. But now I'm in this situation, so that's why I had to lie. That's why I had to deflect, because if you were, if you were doing your job, it wouldn't have been over anyway. That health issue, that situation shouldn't have happened, God, if you were watching me. And we deflect away from here. It wasn't me. It's not my fault. I'm not that bad. Especially if I mean, it was her. By the way, then Eve did the same thing. God, it wasn't me. It was that, that serpent. It was Satan who did this. <coughs> but God still held them accountable. It didn't matter the reflecting. It didn't matter their fears or hiding all of this. God held them accountable and, and gave them some consequences of their sin. So I, I look at Adam and it's me. And Adam is you sometimes. He said, I, I heard you in the garden. God, I, I, I all of a sudden knew your presence. I all of a sudden knew what you said. I all of a sudden knew that I knew better than this. And I was naked before you. So I, I, I tried to hide, tried to do some things. I tried to deflect. And so this is what we do. We are just like Adam. Just like Eve. So how do I overcome this fear? How do I overcome the fear of, of sinning against God? And again, this, these are easier things to say than to do. It's like going crazy, being crazy because of fear and lying because of fear. How do I, I do this? Well, uh, the simple answer is just don't sin anymore. There you go. Now you can go home. Just don't sin anymore. Well, we would know that, but that's, that's real, that's reality. If we live a holy life, if we not, if we're not sinning against God, we don't have to deflect. We don't have to lie. We're, we're living in, in that joy, that fellowship with Him. But, we do sin. So, Acknowledge this. Psalm 51, 4. This is David writing this, King David. He says, against you, you alone, I have sinned and done this evil in your sight. So you're right to pass, when you pass sentence, you are blameless when you judge. Now these are just some words, and the story behind these words is that 
King David saw this woman bathing on top of the rooftop. That's what they did. He said, I, I want her. I mean, he's married. That woman was married. <coughs> so he takes her into his house. Finds out she's pregnant later on. His, her husband is away at war. So he comes home and it's like, it's a long story, but he basically has him killed because of his own sin. It led to that. But gets to the point, God against you and you alone. Yes, it was against him. Yes, it was against her. Yes, it was against all Israel. But God, that's the main thing. And when we sin, we've got to come to this point. And we may have sinned against a person, but more, much more than that, we have sinned against God, Holy God. So acknowledging this, God, I have sinned. I have gone away from what you have said, whether there's something to do or whether there's something not to do. In my mind or my words or my action, God, I have gone against you. Because he is the holy judge, it says. Then Psalm 32, 5 says, Then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not conceal my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. And see, that's the greatness of God. Even though we fear, even though we're so much like Adam, we, we hide, we deflect. When we confess to God, there is forgiveness. The forgiveness is there because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. What Jesus did on the cross is he took the weight of our sin. And because of what he has done, we have been forgiven of all the penalty, all of God's wrath because of our sin. But as believers, that punishment, that wrath of God is gone, but we still dabble, get tempted to sin. We break that fellowship, not our relationship with God, but our fellowship with God. And so there still needs to be that confession so we, we have that, that restored fellowship with God. When you have, you know, when we have an argument, I go back, once I get out of my head and my pride and say, I'm sorry. All right? Remember like four years ago, I didn't do that. <laughs> oh, I do that all. You know, because we, we mess up. But when, when we confess to God, even though we're afraid of what he might do and can do to us, we confess and we have that fellowship restored. Now, the consequences of our sin are still going to be around on this earth. Just like with Adam and Eve, although they, they didn't confess there. But it's the same thing with us. Just because we confess doesn't mean all the consequences are gone. But the fellowship with God, that joy, everything God has for us, because He forgives. So instead of hiding in fear when we sin, we are to confess Honestly agree with God. That's what confess means. Agree with God what we have done against Him. Then Psalm 51, verse 12. God, restore to me the joy of your salvation. And sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. So, when you look back at Adam, when Adam and Eve sold their clothing because they now knew shame, for their sin. When Adam and Eve heard the sound of God walking in the garden, they hid from him. You think they were going, man, this is a great day. There's no joy there. When we're hiding from God, when we're afraid because of our sin, there is no joy there. This is that same psalm that David had prayed after Bathsheba and Uriah, the one he had got pregnant. This is toward the end, after he confessed, when he said, God, I, I need that joy back. I need the joy of that salvation that you only can give to me, that you have given to me through Christ, this before Christ, but for us, through Christ. But also, continue to help me. Give me that willing spirit to obey you, to follow you. Because those fears are going to come in again. Joy. Now, I think this is how we know where we are in our fear. The main verse we've been talking about, because I 
sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. Okay. When Adam and Eve sinned, did they seek the Lord? No. That is a great response when we sin against God. God, I know I've done this. I, I'm seeking you. I'm agreeing with you. God, just restore me again. But we tend to hide instead of seeking. But he answered me. When we seek the Lord, when we sin, he answers me. And he rescues me from all my fears. Now again, we've been talking about this verse for the past three weeks. God does this as we know him more. When we're afraid of man and what they can do. And when we're afraid of God is what we have done. This is the same truth. He can rescue you from your fears. So on this May 28th of 2023, where are you? Are you living in joy? Or are you doing some hiding because of your life, because of your choices, because your mind is your words? Let me tell you, there is no joy in fear at all. And this kind of fear, again, is, is the fear of, I have sinned against you, God. Um, because God wants us to live in joy. And the only joy we can have is when we're following Him. Let's pray. God, I do thank you for just your goodness. God, Adam and Eve deserved instant death if your mercy was there the consequences of sin were there. And so Lord, I pray that we would be more and more honest with ourselves, more and more honest with you. That we would stop hiding. Lord, I thank you that you even give others in our lives to help us in this. God, you even say confess to one another. God, because we all struggle with this. Lord, I pray that when we look to Adam first, and then we look to the what you say is the second Adam is Jesus, who's brought true life to us. Because what he's done on the cross for us, your perfect plan before all of this happened. So Lord, I pray that if we need the restoration of joy, we would come to you, seek you, Confess to you, repent of our of our sins against you. God, that we would live not in fear, in this fear of you, but Lord, we would live in that joy because of our fellowship, our commitment, our following you. So Lord, I pray that we would turn our eyes to you and live for you. For your glory and for the good of the world around us. Praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we sing these two verses of Turn Your Eyes to Jesus, the one we know, and another different one after that. <laughs>
so you know his full joy in awakening here. Right, Brian, please. there, uh, so it's coming up very quickly. I can't believe that June is this week. Crazy. It, it's coming. But, so back there for that. Um, and the next slide is Hot Wheels Race Day. And so go ahead and hit the next next thing there. Watch the video real quick. In that, is there, uh, we also, is there an age limit? No age limit. No. Oh, good. No, you can be, I mean, if you can hold a car, that's old enough. Either way, I mean, uh, again, I've, I've gleaned this off a church in Missouri that's doing this ministry. This is their fifth year they do it, and it's such an outreach for the community. I was like, that would be good for us to start. So we're doing this. But they do all, I mean, they have, I mean, it's mainly children, but they have uh, youth, 
all the way up to adults that will pinch or something. Just because, I mean, I'm sorry, I love other Hot Wheels. I'm left been playing with them for a while, making sure I gotta make sure it works, right? Uh, but also, what we're gonna have that day, um, the website has all this information. There's a form to fill out. Uh, we'll be now promoting this out in the community, but the Rock Island County Sheriff's Department will have their mobile command bus here. It's a 40-foot bus that is technology complete, and so they'll be giving tours of that. We happen to know some people on that uh, force. Uh, Chris Work is the one who has really gotten this started, and he, he sent me a text uh, Friday and said, hey, I sent that flyer to all 127 people in our department. And so he is getting the word out for this. Because uh, we we want to reach this community. I mean, it's all about fun. You know, we have the pop game machine, popcorn machine, hot dogs, and all that. It's just two hours that day. And so we're reaching out with, with just some fun things, but the gospel will be there. Because uh, it's about, always about the gospel. And so not, not a long preaching thing, but the gospel will be interjected in different things we do. Uh, maybe about, you know, finish the course, racing, you know. Anyway, that's coming up. Also on that morning, uh, Gilda's Run. Uh, Gilda's a, a house in Danforth that does uh, for cancer patients. They're doing the race that morning. It has nothing to do with us, but they're running right up here. So we're going to have some water spots around just handing out water. That's all we're doing, just handing out water um, in Jesus' name to help them. What and so they run, and the race starts at 8 o'clock. There's different races that they run. The fun, fun run is, is just like a mile. It doesn't sound like fun to me, but that's the fun run. It's a mile. I mean, they're starting down. They've got to run up the hill to begin with. It's just like the, you know, across the river of Brady. All right, so that is that. That's the, then the next week, Friday and Saturday, is the Coal Valley Days. And so we're going to have a booth there on Friday. The, the fireworks of that Friday night on June 30th. The next day, we're having the parade. We're having two floats this year. We have one float handing out. We're getting 1,100 bottles of water this year because we keep running out. 1,100 bottles, but then we're having a truck at the end. That's where I'm going to be back there walking with trash bags, picking up, having, getting all the trash all the way. When I talked to the people about the rate, they said, that's an awesome idea. And so we want to be those servants at the end of the parade, handing out bottles and wherever they put us in the beginning, but at the end of the parade with trash bags to serve our community, to show the love of Christ. Starting next week, there will be an order form for new t-shirts. If you want a new t-shirt, uh, it will be different kinds. We'll have the cotton ones, but also some of the, the dry fit ones for those light people who want the lighter ones. That's next Sunday. You'll see that. And we've got to order quick to get them in before this point. Um, so that's Coal Valley Days. Then, Summerfest. It's coming. Just mark the calendars. I'm still waiting on a lot of the extra um, literature, but yeah, yeah. We we've, we've had a battle with UPS this past week, so it's supposed to now be delivered Tuesday for this. Yeah. So again, we we have pretty much everything mm -hmm. set up and, and ready to go. Uh, I'm going to preach. There's six different six, six different themes. There's the main theme and then five days, and I'm going to preach through all those leading up to our summer fest. Um, and so you'll be seeing decorations start coming into play week by week as we get to that, building excitement for that time. Uh, by the way, with, that, uh, with the Hot Wheels race that day, we have a mission team coming from Central Missouri Youth Mission Team that will also be helping out, but helping out. But I need help here. And so if you'd like to help out in any way for that Hot Wheels ministry, it's only from 12 to 2. There's some preliminary things I need help with. I need some ideas. I need some of those. So if you want to help me out in any way, please see me after the service for that. Any other announcements? All right, we're starting to do this. I did it last week, and I try to keep on doing this. Let's end with a verse of a song. So I'd like, I love this joyful thing. We need to leave joyful. So let's stand as our closing sing that first verse of joyful, joyful. We adore thee.
where do we go? Have a great holiday for those who can holiday.